talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And gone! Welcome back to the Squared Sports Podcast. On the host of this podcast, Lane Frank, we're now on episode 173. Yes, we're 173 episodes through, and I got a great episode planned for you. We're back from our summer hiatus, and it's time for a schoolyard sports summer, everybody. This is ours, and we got some great things to go over in this episode. We got the NBA draft tonight, Euro Cup and Copa America going on right now. The Celtics just won the NBA Finals, French Open's finished, we had a great Stanley Cup Finals, and so much more. Stay tuned for an absolute action-packed episode 173 to kick off our summer season, everybody. Stay tuned for an action-packed episode. Let's start off episode 173, how we always do, the headlines in the NBA. Okay, first thing in the NBA, which I didn't get to talk about in the past few episodes because we know we've been gone. The Celtics have won the NBA championship, everybody. Jason Tatum, we did it. They did it. They won the championship. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, they need to be split up. They need to be this. They need to be that. They won, everybody. But here's what I'm going to say. Yes, they won together, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Now maybe it's time to say, let's go do it on my own. Let's split up. Let's do something different. I could see that in the next few coming years. Either Tatum saying, I don't need to be a Jalen Brown anymore, or Jalen Brown saying, hey, I don't need to be in Tatum's shadow anymore, even though he kind of grew out of that, winning finals MVP. And I think that maybe upset Tatum inside. I don't know. I don't know these guys. But still, great finals win for the Boston Celtics. Just wanted to point that out right there. Other big news in the NBA, J.J. Reddick got hired as the Los Angeles Lakers head coach. The big miss on Danny Hurley was big, but still, J.J. Reddick is going to be a good NBA head coach. It's just that... He could still play in the NBA if he wanted to. He has the level. He has the age still. It's just he doesn't want to because, you know, he's a little bit older. It's a very young hire. It's a worrisome hire because is he going to be a player in that locker room or is he going to be a coach? Is he going to hold these guys accountable? Is he going to be when, say, he calls it Andy Davis? Andy Davis said, well, you were terrible when you played with us in New Orleans. You were terrible this. You can't tell me what to do. That's the part I'm worried about because it's so recent. When Steve Nash got hired as the head coach of the Nets, it wasn't so recent. For J.J. Redick, Los Angeles Lakers, this guy was playing the NBA two years ago. That's the thing to worry about right there. For the Mavericks, I mean, all these guys know his things. JJ Redick, will he have that authority in the locker room is what I'm thinking about right now. Other big NBA news, we got the big Josh Giddy deal for Alex Caruso. Highway robbery, I think for both teams, actually. Because the Bulls, they don't necessarily need Alex Caruso. You get a young guard with a lot of potential and Josh Giddy still. And for the Thunder, you're a win-now team. You get rid of maybe someone not always loving the locker room and Josh Giddy, and you get a great role player and Alex Caruso. So good win-win deal. I don't think the Bulls GM deserves that much hate as getting right now, but still, surprised that this was just a straight-up deal, not some picks involved in there. And we got the NBA draft tonight, everybody. Got my mock draft coming up later on this episode. Stay tuned. We got a lot of great stuff and maybe some news coming up in this episode. And then MLB, the Mets, my favorite team, as always. I said last month in May that this might not be the worst team of all time, but they're the most embarrassing team of all time. Now they're the most fun team of all time. Thank you to Grimace from McDonald's for that. Throws out the first pitch. Since then, the Mets have been on absolute rampage fire, everybody. We love to see it. Half a game out of the wild card. Mets are on fire. Max Scherzer, former Met from last season, will be making a season debut with the Texas Rangers. Very interested to see how that goes. Coming back from injury, Scherzer. Back in baseball, always good to see. New York Yankees going through a bit of a slump right now. Maybe that's due to the judge injury. Maybe that's due to the Soto injury. And Soto said he's fine, but since then, he's been buying 206. Not so fine. Let's see how the Yankees do recover after that tough series against the Orioles. Los Angeles Dodgers, they were on a great run, and then Mookie Betts breaks his wrist. Tough break for them right there. Really all about news in MLB, but still, Mookie Betts, tough break, breaking his wrist. Surgery, let's see how that impacts the rest of the season for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And tennis, we had a great French Open. Carlos Alcaraz takes on his third career Grand Slam, winning his first on clay. Youngest player to win a Grand Slam on all three services. Hardcourt, the U.S. Open in 2022. Grass at Wimbledon in 2023. And now clay here in 2024. Will he win Wimbledon next month? You got a lot of great chance to win it. No one Nadal. No Federer, no Djokovic. First time in years, I think since 2000, we've had no players from the big three in Wimbledon. A little bit surprising to see right there. But again, tennis, Wimbledon coming up. French Open, great stuff that was. We got the Olympics coming up in tennis next month. For soccer, we got the Euro Cup going on right now. A lot of big upsets. Poland has already been eliminated. A few other teams have already been eliminated. Who else do you think will get eliminated from Euro Cup before the round of 16? Same for Copa America. We got the USA-Bolivia match. Great stuff there. So, that's bad for news. The headlines this week got 
great stuff coming up for the rest of this episode. Now, take of the week. My take of the week this week is that playing in Olympics is the highest honor in sports and every single pro athlete, whether you're a football player when football is in the Olympics in 2028, whether you're a basketball player from Slovenia, USA, Canada, I don't care where you're from, whether you're a baseball player, tennis player, soccer player, actually I'll exclude soccer from this conversation because they have Euro Cup and Copa America and nobody's going to play in the Olympics during that time. But I think if you're a top athlete in the world, no matter what sport, tennis, like I said, you should play in the Olympics. That's my take of the week. If I'm a top athlete in the world, why would I not want to represent my country? That's the what the Olympics was made for, to have the best of the best put on all at the same time. So why don't we see it? Why for the MLB in 2028 when the Olympics comes to LA? Why can't we stop the MLB season for two weeks and have Bryce Harper play for USA? Why can't we have Dominican Republic play great when they really have no representation ever in the Olympics? Why can't they have a great team now? Venezuela, all these countries, Japan, baseball in the Olympics. We don't need the WBC. We need this. I get for soccer, you have the World Cup. That's different from the Olympics. Let's exclude that from this conversation. But for USA, same thing. They have a great team this year and it's exciting to see. But still, even some guys who could have been on the team, that weren't on the team, that are some of the best players in the United States. Just my thoughts right there. Olympics is the highest honor in sports. That's my take of the week. Play in the Olympics if you're a top athlete, no matter what. Now, top five, everybody. This week's top five is my top five NBA off-season hot takes. This upcoming off-season, got some great stuff coming up this summer in the NBA. So let's dive into it. LeBron James will stay a Los Angeles Laker, but they won't draft Brian James. Brian James will either go somewhere else or go undrafted, but he's not going to be a Los Angeles Laker. I think LeBron is okay with that, and he will be a Laker. Maybe LeBron doesn't want Bronny. Maybe JJ Reddick doesn't want Bronny. Maybe Rich Paul doesn't want Bronny. In LA anymore. I could see Bronny on the Suns. I could see Bronny on the Celtics. I could see Bronny on the Knicks. I could see Bronny anywhere as an attempt to lure LeBron. But I think at the end of the day, LeBron stays a Los Angeles Laker. That's number five. Number four, Clay Thompson jumps ship from the Golden State Warriors over to the Los Angeles Lakers. This is really surprising to me, but I think it happens. Clay Thompson going through some changes, playing for Team Bahamas this summer, not Team USA. Not good enough for Team USA anymore, but had a rough season last year. I think it's time to move on from that big three, whatever they had in Golden State, Draymond, Clay, and Stephen Curry. It's time for Clay Thompson not to pave his own path, but join a new one with the Los Angeles Lakers. And number four, just like his dad did. Number three, DeMar DeRozan heads back home to the Los Angeles Clippers through a trade or free agency. So DeMar DeRozan playing for the Bulls right now, done with the Bulls in my opinion. He heads over to the Los Angeles Clippers. You'll see why. I'm going to the Clippers. you see maybe if a player leaves the Clippers. I think if you can team up DeMar DeRozan and James Harden, now Kawhi Leonard might still be there. Paul George might not be there anymore. You have to wait to see the rest of these hot takes. But DeMar DeRozan out to the LA Clippers. I'd love to see that. And I think it happens this offseason. Number three. Number two, the Hawks keep DeJounte Murray, but trade Trey Young, everybody. It's going to happen. Get ready for it. They're going to take Zachary Rusaker, number one, in the NBA draft, and they're going to get rid of of Trey Young. Watch it happen tonight in the NBA draft. I don't know if Trey gets traded tonight, but they are taking Zachary Saker at number one. And that's number two hot take. Trey Young is gone of the Atlanta Hawks organization. And number one hot take, Paul George ends up a Golden State Warrior next season. Yes, Paul George to the Golden State Warriors. Get ready for that. So new stuff for the Clippers. You're going to have DeMar DeRozan, Harden, and Kawhi Leonard. And then for the Warriors, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, Paul George. Get ready for it. It's going to be a great team. Great offseason acquisition. Those are my hot takes there, buddy. Number one, Paul George goes to the Golden State Warriors. Hot take. That's what this is for, everybody. Still more to come. Episode 173. Now, did you know? This week's did you know. It's a great one. So, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Roger Federer won't be playing in this year's Wimbledon. It's going to be the first time in a while that's happened. But it's also the first time since 2002 that a Wimbledon final didn't feature at least one of these players. Kind of crazy to think about it. Last time we saw a Wimbledon final without one of these three players was 2002. Lane Hewitt won straight sets. Just shows the dominance that these three have had over the sport over the past 25 years of tennis. That's about for didn't know this week. Now I want to bring back a classic segment here on Square Sports. Squared Sports Scream! And I'm screaming on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars and maybe even the whole entire NFL. Because who let this man get paid 55 million a year? 55 million a year for Trevor Lawrence. Now, you tell me this after Trevor Lawrence's freshman year of college, I'm saying he probably should be paid 55 million a year because he's that type of player. He's going to be a great player in the NFL. 
He has not been a great player in the NFL. He's been a decent to good quarterback in the NFL who does not deserve $55 million a year. What happened to the days when we paid quarterbacks $15 million a year, $20 million a year, $25 million a year? I'm comfortable paying Trevor Lawrence $25 million a year. Not $55 million a year. $55. More than Joe Burrow. More than Patrick Mahomes. More than Jalen Hurts. More than Josh Allen. The highest paid player in NFL history is fourth-year Trevor Lawrence. Fourth-year Trevor Lawrence. Not Hall of Fame Trevor Lawrence, which he won't be. Not All-Star Trevor Lawrence. Not Super Bowl winning quarterback Trevor Lawrence. The Trevor Lawrence who has one good playoff win and a collapse last season and a terrible rookie season. That Trevor Lawrence is getting paid $55 million a year. I don't get it. Is it a reset of the salary cap? Is it this? Why do athletes... I'm cool with athletes being paid a lot, but why do athletes at the level of Trevor Lawrence need to be yet paid $55 million a year? When Christian McCaffrey is getting paid about $19 million over three years, Michael Nwenu, an offensive lineman, I want to point this out here, offensive lineman get paid a lot. Three years, $57 million for Michael Nwenu. I think McCaffrey is making three years, $19 million. The NFL has a broken, broken contract system when offensive lineman, who's a good offensive lineman, went to Michigan, hates a a Michigan guy, he went to Michigan, good player, but he's getting paid more, way more, than the best running back in the NFL or could be the best offensive talent we've seen in the past 25 years in the NFL? Trevor Lawrence is nowhere near that. Trevor Lawrence should be nowhere to be paid the same amount as Christian McCaffrey. But that's the amount of NFL we live in to where Trevor Lawrence makes Christian McCaffrey look like a peasant in today's NFL. Getting paid $55 million a year. 55. Ridiculous. Is Trevor Lawrence better than Dayon Jones? Is he? I'm serious. Don't know the answer to that question right now. That's about, I mean, they did the same amount of playoff wins. That's about for my squared sports scream. I'm screaming on you, Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the whole entire contract system, but mostly Trevor Lawrence. That's about for the scream this week. Now, everybody, the fifth annual Schoolyard Sports NBA Lottery Mock Draft, everybody. We've been doing this since the very early days of Schoolyard Sports, episode 10, and now we're all the way up here at episode 173, still doing NBA Mock Drafts. That was a great draft, 2020. 2021, 22, 23, and now 2024. 20 will always be special because it was in October, 21 in July, and then we got back to the normal level. But still, this is a great NBA draft. I know it's not a great draft class, but it's going to be a great NBA draft because every draft is great to watch, and we're going to see some surprises, maybe some trades. I think that's something to look out for in this draft. Maybe you see a really weak class. I think there's something to look out for. See big trades by players we already have in the NBA. Maybe Trey Young trade. Maybe another Jimmy Butler trade like we saw back in 2017. Stuff like that is to look out for in this NBA draft. So let's get into it. With number one pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select. Already told you earlier in the episode, Zachary Saker, per sources, tell Squared Sports, this guy is a lock to go number one. Now, I don't know much about him because he played in the French League. Is he the next one, Manyama? No, because they play different positions. But he's going to be a good player in the NBA, a good guard, a big guard. Number one, Zachary Rusaker to the Atlanta Hawks. Again, these French guys a bit unknown. There's a lot of them in this draft class, but Rusaker goes number one to the Atlanta Hawks. Number two, the Washington Wizards trade this pick over to the San Antonio Spurs. Wizards don't take it. Give it to the Spurs. And with that number two overall pick, San Antonio Spurs pair up the two amazing Frenchmen, Victor Omayama and Alexander Saar, for years to come. They get their Duncan Robinson and Wamanyama and Alex Saar, building up a great duo for years to come. Wemby gets a new best friend on the team, Alex Saar, over to the Washington Wizards. Number three, the Houston Rockets are now on the clock, and I have them taking Reed Shepard, guard out of Kentucky. Now, here's the Reed, Reed Shepard dilemma. He didn't start at Kentucky. You know who also didn't start at Kentucky? Devin Booker. Devin Booker's one of the best players in the NBA. Do I see Booker in Reed Shepard? A little bit, but he's not a great defender, and that's going to need to work a little bit, especially in this Rockets team that doesn't play great defense. Let's see how that works, but they have a lot of guards. He can rest for a little bit. He doesn't need to exactly play right away, day one, start day one. They have Jalen Green. They had Fred Van Vliet. They have a few other guys on the squad. They don't need to use Reed Shepard right away, but eventually he'll move into that role of being their future shooting guard. Rockets take Reed Shepard, hoping he's their next James Harden. Number four, Washington Wizards are now on that clock from that San Antonio Spurs trade. And maybe a bit of a faller in this draft class for me. Donovan Klingen goes number four. Big potential for him to go at number one. My sources tell me it's Rusaker, not Klingen. So Klingen goes number four for me right here to the Washington Wizards. This team's dysfunctional. Jordan Poole is dysfunctional. Kyle Kuzma's dysfunctional. Can Donovan Klingen help out that? We're going to have to see. Now for Klingen, I watch him in college and I don't see number four overall pick potential. I see maybe... Journeyman college potential, like a Hunter Dickinson, but I don't necessarily see number four draft pick. NBA teams think he's going to be a great player. 
I haven't seen it yet exactly at the NBA level because he was great in college. Can you do it at the NBA level for Donald Klingon, the Washington Wizards? Number five, Detroit Pistons. We got new management in Detroit, everybody. We're going to have a new head coach, which they don't have right now, and you're going to be making the NBA draft. Now a head coach is a bit ridiculous to me. No Troy Weaver there anymore. New management, the Detroit Pistons, and they take a surprise move right here. It's a risk, but it's going to work. Take on Ron Holland out of the G League. Ron Holland was incredible. High school played Duncanville High School, great academy out there in Texas. Had a great high school career. Should have gone to Texas. Instead, went to the G League Ignite program. Did terrible there. I think he's going to have a good NBA career, everybody. Look at Ron Holland to be the biggest riser for me in this draft class. Surprise pick. Number five, the Detroit Pistons. Number four, Charlotte Hornets are on the clock. And they take Matthias Bazoulas also out of G League Ignite. This guy has a lot of great upside. He goes number six, the Charlotte Hornets. Number seven, Portland Trailblazers. And they get the steal of draft. And Cody Williams, brother of Jalen Williams. Cody Williams was a top recruit in high school. Had a great time in the NCAA tournament. And now one game against Florida. I got Cody Williams going number seven to the uh, Portland Trailblazers. Number eight, San Antonio Spurs are on the clock again because they have two lottery picks this year. You have the big men down. You've got Alex Sar, and you've got Victor Omiyama. Now, do you maybe get Trey Young? I say no. I say you take another guard here. Don't get Trey Young in free agency through a trade. You take Rob Dillingham. He's going to shoot a lot of shots, but he can also pass the ball really well. Same with the Reed Shepard dilemma. Didn't start much in Kentucky, but he's going to play a lot in NBA. Fits into that Greg Popovich system, in my opinion. San Antonio Spurs take on Rob Dillingham at pick number eight. Number nine, Memphis Grizzlies are on the clock, but they actually trade this pick. They need a rim protector. They get their future rim protector and Mitchell Robinson through a trade. Now, this is a steal from the Knicks, trading Mitchell Robinson for the number nine pick. But like I said, this is a very weak draft class, and I can see this happening. Memphis Grizzlies trade the pick to the New York Knicks, and with that number nine pick, Knicks also maybe get the steal of the draft. A guy who fell a bunch for me, Stephon Castle. Out of UConn, this guy has so much upside. Had a great end of his college career. His freshman year at UConn, great into the season. Great national nice championship game, great tournament. Stuff on Castle, number nine. It's the New York Knicks. It's got fitting great in New York. Love it as a New York Knicks fan. I'm giving the New York Knicks the biggest steal of the draft. Ten, Utah Jazz. They're going to get a great player right here. Might be a bit of a reach for this guy, but he's going to be hardworking. Had a great NCAA tournament. Had a great season the whole entire time. Jared McCain, who I think is the best shooter out of any player in this draft class, Jared McCain over to the Utah Jazz. Going to fit in nicely in that system. Pick number 11, Chicago Bulls are on the clock. Here's what's going to happen with the Chicago Bulls. They're getting rid of DeMar DeRozan. They miss out on Taj Pizzullo, so I know they really, really want. Probably trading Zach Levine. Kobe White isn't exactly the point guard of the future. It's time to get a great point guard. I think you take Isaiah Collier, a guy who had number one pick potential, just got hurt in college at USC. Maybe got shadowed by Bronny, which is even ridiculous to say because he was much better than Bronny his freshman year. It's just the media gave Bronny so much more attention than Collier. Collier single-handedly put this USC team on his back all season for Andy Enfield. And at pick 11, the Bulls take Isaiah Collier. Pick number 12, Oklahoma City Thunder on the clock. And they don't need a panic right here because they had a great season. They were the one seed in the Western Conference. So you can take a reach right here. You can take a developmental pick. I think that's what they do. So they wanted to keep Josh Giddey this season, but they wanted him to come off the bench. And Josh Giddey was like, heck no, I'm not doing that. What if they find the Josh Giddey this draft class? And I think they do. It's Johnny Furphy out of Kansas. I watched Furphy a lot this year at Kansas. Out of Australia, he's already had pro experience playing in the NBL League out there where a lot of guys played RJ Hampton, LaMelo Ball in the past. I think that's what they do right here. Taking Johnny Furphy could have had a way bigger role at Kansas. Going to have a bigger role in Oklahoma City. Maybe coming off the bench a little bit, playing about 15 minutes a night. I think that's a great role for him. Johnny Furphy. Heads over to the Oklahoma State Thunder at pick number 12. Great shooter around the court. This is, I mean, I'm loving this pick right here for the Oklahoma State Thunder. Please do it. Please take Johnny Furphy at pick number 12. Like I said, it's a reach. It's a developmental pick. Send to the G League. Send to whatever you want to do. But it's going to pay off in the long run. Number 13, Sacramento Kings are on the clock. I think we can all collectively agree that Keegan Murray is not the prospect we all thought he was going to be because he was the top five pick. And he hasn't really molded into that top five pick potential yet or the top five pick player we've wanted to see from him. A guy that can be like a Keegan Murray, maybe even better, not on the defense end, but a good player, best shooter in college basketball last season, Dalton Connect out of Tennessee. Doesn't need to take over your offense, but I think he could fit in really nicely with this offense, that Mike Brown system. So 13, second to last pick in this draft class, Kings take Dalton Connect, the fifth year player out of Tennessee. Dalton Connect, nobody knew his name a year ago. Now everybody knows his name. One of the best players in college basketball this season. Goes number 13 to the Sacramento Kings. And number 14, my final pick, of this NBA mock draft to round out the fifth straight year of doing NBA mock drafts on Squared Sports. The final one, draft nights today. The Portland Trail Blazers are on the clock again, and they take Baylor freshman Jacoby Walter with that number 14 overall pick. This is a great NBA mock draft. 
I know it's not the best NBA draft class. I know that. But it's going to be a really fun NBA draft. Get ready for some excitement, some entertainment, and a perfect mock draft. Lottery look after right here. Watch that. That's about my NBA mock draft. Still more to come. Episode 173. Okay, Squirt Sports fans, you know how I said that Paul George was going to be a Golden State Warrior and that was just a hot take? Actually, it wasn't just a hot take. It's the real truth. Sources tell Squirt Sports, sources tell me that Paul George is going to be a Golden State Warrior very soon. Maybe even now. He's going to be a Golden State Warrior by the time this episode comes out. It's going to be for Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody at least in this deal. But Paul George is going to be a Golden State Warrior. You can bet on that. You can bet everything on that. Like Paul George will be a Golden State Warrior next season. That's what my sources tell me. Very trusted sources here at Squared Sports. Get ready for that. We got some great stuff coming up in the future for Squared Sports. Getting more news for you right away. But this is one big thing right here. Paul George will be a Golden State Warrior in the next few days. Get ready for that, everybody. Or maybe he already has one by the time this episode drops. That's about for the buzz of this week. Now, the best for last question today. This week's question is, do you prefer the series format in the playoffs like we have in the NBA, MLB, and NHL, or just the one-game format like we see in the NFL and college basketball and college football? Leave your thoughts on that in the comments. That's probably the question this week. That's probably Squared Sports and Lane Frank, episode 173. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Squared Sports on Instagram, at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on X, at Squared Sport. Follow Squared Sports on TikTok, at Squared Sports. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review for the best sports content in the world. Be back here next week, episode 174. Summer's just starting, everybody, and school yard time.